A young professional named Chirag Shah has come up with a unique solution in the physiotherapy sector of medical industry. His company called Rymo focuses on accelerating physical recovery by providing objective and goal-based training using robotics and virtual reality. Welcome to yet another edition of Change Makers. Technology-based solutions for physical rehabilitation can provide a wide range of benefits for patients. They can provide more accurate and precise treatments, reduce cost, reduce the need for manual labor, and even allow for more efficient rehabilitation. Technology-based solution can also provide a more personalized experience for patients, allowing them to monitor their progress more closely and easily. Today, we have with us an entrepreneur who has made a mark in the field of technology-based rehab solution. Let us know more about it from the man himself. Hello, Chirag. Welcome to the Change Makers. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me to the Change Makers and featuring our story. I am looking forward to our discussion today. Yeah, thank you, Chirag, for being with us. Uh, Chirag, what is the problem that you are addressing through your startup? Startup uh, is actually focused on a very specific domain, uh, which is kind of encapsulated in our name itself. So the startup name is Rymo, R-Y-M-O, and it stands for Rediscover Your Mobility. In India and across the world, if you look at the number of people who are finding it difficult to move on their own independently, it is a whooping 2 billion people. Now, if you look at what they need to start moving themselves or become independent, the simple question is physiotherapists. But if you look at the vast difference in the number of skilled therapists and the number of people who require it, uh, you realize that there is some drawbacks which come along with it, especially from a patient perspective. There are three major pain points. The first is they find it very difficult to understand whether they are improving. The, when we COVID came and hit us, we all had our COVID reports, which showed us our different scores or severity of COVID. But in physiotherapy, it is very difficult to do that. So patients don't realize whether they're improving. Physiotherapy is not working. Second problem is that time lagta hai. So it probably could take you one week or it could take you one month or it could take you even five years to recover your independence. So it is a very time sticking process if you do it traditionally. With the use of robotics or uh, different technologies, uh, we believe that we can kind of help them recover faster. And the third most, impo most important aspect is to make sure that people don't give up and they are motivated to continue. Like many difficult things, exercise is a very, very difficult habit to form and not Many individuals can do that. Physiotherapy is exercise when you are in pain. So nobody likes pain, nobody likes exercise. If you mix it together, that is physiotherapy. So for us, it was important to make sure these demographic people can recover, or they can become independent and live life like they are supposed to, full of freedom and full of energy. So this is probably where Raimo comes in to make people independent and live a complete life. Yeah, thank you, Chirag. Thank you for sharing your insights on the problem of your startup is addressing. It is inspiring to see the impact you are making in the healthcare industry. Chirag, please tell us in detail about the work that you are doing. Uh, so thank you so much for bringing upon the impact that we are making. And that is probably the only reason why we began this journey. So, so far, I think so we have just touched the surface. No, uh, probably not even touched the surface yet. Uh, going is just to cover up what we have been doing in the healthcare sector. First, as we've identified the problem and the domain, we spent probably more than two years in evaluating the problem and spending time with patients and physiotherapists. In this journey, uh, we learned about different aspects of rehabilitation, specifically physical rehabilitation and occupational therapy. And we've integrated that to technology and made a very portable and 
uh, easy to use device which is built on the technology stack of robotics and virtual rehabilitation or also known as gamification these two technology stacks have been incorporated and a company is now focused on making it accessible to the world so we have kind of launched this in india uh, we have 20 plus installations across india uh, probably we have we are now located in all the four metro cities and looking going forward we are looking at expanding this to the world so we have just started and though we have had around 700 patients in their recovery journey i think so we could reach 7 million in the future so that is why you know i would stress on the point we have just begun but yeah great but you just you are saying that you just begin but you you are you, you are beginning with the 70 uh, places already your device is installed in 70 places it's good to know uh, from your in, informative response it's clear that you have a deep understanding of the work you are doing and the impact it can have on patients uh, what are the advantages of using robotics and vr in the rehab therapy chirag so there are predominantly three advantages that we are looking at when we try and include technology in physiotherapy like i mentioned the first problem was of lack of awareness or monitoring problems so when we you use or incorporate robotics or virtual rehabilitation or virtual reality into physiotherapy, you can measure. With robotics, you can measure how much a patient has moved, how much strength he is applying, and whether physiotherapy or whatever treatment he is doing, be it medicines or anything else, whether that is working. So you have a number to your recovery, and when you see progress, you kind of, you know, are more motivated to do further. The second thing and the most important thing is you get personalized training for accelerated recovery. Suppose, imagine you are you don't have any robotics or virtual reality training. You would end up doing a traditional thing for a few days and you leave it out. But with robotics, you can give a patient enough assistance which is customized for the patient. So even if there is a therapist who is not able to dedicate 100% of his time, they can still set the personalized protocol for the patient and get them to do the number of repetitions that they want. Especially in neurological cases such as stroke, it is proven that doing hundreds of repetitions helps improve the learning curve of the brain, which is also known as neuroplasticity. So with robotics, you can accelerate the process in which a patient, paralyzed patient can learn how to do things again. So robotics can help you significantly in improving your neuroplasticity and accelerating recovery. The third most important aspect is engagement and fun. You don't need to pop a medicine every day to recover from such diseases. Generally, that is also not a way to go forward. So what uh, patients have to undergo is physiotherapy. Once you are stabilized medically, your medications can continue. But for recovery, you need to take uh, the daily dose of exercise that you require through physiotherapy. Now, like I mentioned before, it is difficult. So by introducing games, uh, patients start enjoying what they're doing. They don't realize that they have worked out for half an hour, one hour, or sometimes even more. So when you immerse a patient and make it fun for them, any activity which is fun, you end up doing for hours. We watch Netflix for us. All of this kind of, you know, helps a patient recover. But predominantly the baseline is a good therapist with robotics and VR makes them super powered to, you know, treat patients in a better fashion. It is not an independent technology. It works with the physiotherapist and it is like a superpower which, you know, helps you run X percent faster or something like that. So that is how we, you know, uh, our technology is helping the patients. Yeah, great, Chirag. It's good to know the numerous advantages of using robotics and VR technology in rehabilitation therapy. It is exciting to see the potential of this technology to transform the industry. Uh, what are the certifications and approvals were required for your devices? How did you manage to obtain those? So when we started back in 2018, just after the Smart India Hackathon, uh, physiotherapy was not regulated. 
So when I say that any equipment being manufactured for physiotherapy did not require a certificate or a license, which is special. A normal license, which is required for an exercise equipment would have been okay. But after 2020, um, Indian government has introduced multiple regulations for better uh, managing the entire healthcare equipment area and physiotherapy, which comes under it. So it was, to be honest and very truthful, it was definitely surprising and stressful. Uh, being fresh graduates, we were not aware of how we'll be able to do this. So to come back to your question, what currently is required is based on the classification of your product. It could be class, uh, severe class, uh, risky, uh, higher class device if it's riskier. A lower class device is just safe, very safe and not much risk. You have to classify it and then take approval from CDSCO, uh, which is a central authority to you know regulate these devices. Uh, so, so far, RIMO started our journey for regulating almost one year back. And we are very happy to say today we stand on a position where we have international certifications like ISO 13485, which is the gold standard for um, uh, process to maintain quality of your medical device. We have an electrical and mechanical safety certificate as per international standards tested in a NABL accredited lab. And we have also received the necessary permissions from CDSCO. And a final few communication stages are ongoing, but we have the necessary licenses to sell in India. Yeah, great, Chirag. Congratulations. You already obtained the international certifications. Uh, thank you for sharing the regulatory process you went through to ensure your devices met the necessary standards. Hope it will be helpful for those innovators in the similar field. Apart from the technology or equipment, the vital part is that the therapist should be trained and skilled and the patient should be motivated. How do you deal with this? A very well thought question uh, and something that was on top of our minds right from day one. Uh, we have heard stories where there are expensive equipments which are not being utilized because of lack of training. So what we have done right from the conception stage, we have spent significant amount of time with the therapist with each of our prototypes as well. So we have asked the therapist to use our devices right from the early stages uh, and also the patient. So what we got was very early feedback from the customer itself and which helped us build a very simple to use, a very user-friendly mobile application, uh, which the doctor uses or the therapist uses uh, to uh, use the machine, set different protocols, etc. With this, we have found out the training time to have reduced significantly uh, with the easy to use product and just a three hour clinical training during installation. We have found our customers to be become comfortable with the device, at least to start exploring the product. And then it takes around uh, one to two weeks more of personal usage to get the confidence to use it without any uh, doubts. Uh, to further on uh, improve the experience, we have brochures, digital content uh, specific to different parts of the body and different features of the product, which we share with the doctors. And they can refer that to, you know, train new therapists who join in or refresh anything that they've forgotten. So that kind of helps and reduces their reliance on the developer on the manufacturer in learning to use the product. For the motivation, what we have found is a demo session. So every patient, once they do a few sessions on the machine, uh, we have heard the single most important feedback is the patients love it. And whenever they come, walk into the center, they want to use it and they demand for it. So when something like this is coming from the patient, we have understood that whatever we have built based on feedback has been working really well and our therapists and patients are enjoying what we have done. Chirag, it's good to know that already you have positive feedback from the patients for your uh, equipment. The role of therapist and patient motivation in the recovery processes indeed critical. It is impressive to see the measures you have taken to ensure that healthcare professionals receive proper training 
and patients receive personalized treatment plans. It's good to know all your uh, treatment plans. Using robotics and VR to deal with the patient recovery in physical rehabilitation is not very common. Did you ever doubt the success or acceptability of your techniques? Actually, this is very true and I think so it is a good thing to doubt whatever you are building. Uh, when you are in the zone of critical thinking, you will try and improve and make it better for the end user or the customer or the doctor or the patient. So for the initial two years, uh, we did not incorporate as a company at all. We were just a group of individuals who were highly motivated trying to build something. If it benefits, only then we will form a company is what we had decided. And I would say that almost two and a half years we spent just doing this. Uh, this kind of helped us understand the magnitude of the problem and gave us the freedom to not uh, be scared of failure. So we tried different prototypes, we changed it across and we built what the end user wanted and not what we knew how to build. So I think so there was a lot of doubts and uh, even now we have some adaptability, more than 20 units are there installed in the market. But we still feel that today also uh, we have plans for doing clinical validation with prestigious medical institute institutions. So the validation of the product is there. Uh, we are also in trying to see how we can validate our product in different geographies. So we are planning to do at least four or five international deployments in this year. So anybody who is watching this and has connects outside India, you know, feel free to recommend. Uh, so this will also help us validate whether this problem is being addressed not only in India, but outside India as well. We are also trying to uh, figure out whether this is a solution only for the urban population or for the rural areas as well. So we are trying to see if we can find some corporate partners or we can partner with NGOs through CSR engagements and see whether we can deploy this in Google settings and provide them also the best rehabilitation tools. So we have some validation, but the process is still ongoing. So probably till we don't have 10,000 installations, I think so, we still need to keep asking this question. We wish you to uh, have 10,000 installations very soon. It is inspiring to see that you have confidence in the potential of your technology to make positive impact in this industry. So making patient recovery equipments for physical rehabilitation is a very specialized and demanding business. How challenging was it for you to start such a venture? Uh, this is something which is very true. Uh, what uh, started as a small project in college and taking it to a business was extremely challenging. Three points like you mentioned in the question itself. First is domain expertise is not only engineering, you also require medical uh, knowledge and domain specific knowledge which is medical also physical rehabilitation. The second aspect is we are quite young as uh, students just starting off for the first venture. So prior business experience was lacking. So we also had to kind of, you know, learn all of that during the process. And the third thing is we all, we had to do this in a very frugal budget and a resource constrained environment because it is not so easy to, you know, start a business without adequate resources. And our journey has been one hell of a ride. We enjoyed some moments. We've been down in the dumps. So it's all been a graph of continuous learning and growth for both me and my team. Some few areas which, you know, were extremely challenging to name specifically three, probably was the first decision to take, you know, probably set that goal for yourself that, you know, you want to build this. So after the Smart India Hackathon, the first decision that we took was, you know, we gave up our campus placements and we said, yeah, okay, we don't know what we are going to do, how this is going to help us or what is going to happen in a career. 
but let's kind of you know take this decision to build this uh, this is a technology or tool which will help patients recover uh, from cases like stroke paralysis orthopedic injuries what all i think so that was the most challenging and scary decision that we took because probably all of our friends were going somewhere outside india or taking up jobs and you know you are out there doing your thing in that room the second most challenging phase was probably covid uh where you know though we had by touch of uh, luck a few grants but we couldn't get that money into our banks because of some issues which came up during covid and you know the team there came out on top all of our team was you know hell bent on working even if we couldn't draw salaries etc so kind of helped us a lot go through that phase but that was definitely a very challenging journey and third part is you know trying to take the decision of going from a project phase to a company phase so in this we had a very clear metric that if we find a buyer for a device probably that is when we will you know start a company about it and luckily we found a few early people customers whom we met at conferences and you know through demos even during covid who kind of supported us and told us you know what you're doing is good and we will probably you know buy this from you so give us your machine and you know that kind of helped us build a company and i think so we are now facing a lot more challenges like fundraising now launching in india is a different story the quality requirements the regulatory requirements are very different from launching in the us the europe or across the world so the bigger challenges are that now uh, we have overcome the first barrier of taking that decision but let's see what the story how the story will unfold really it's inspiring to see uh, that you overcame the obstacles through persistence hard work and passion we wish you whatever the challenges you face and make it as a opportunities for your product how did you make the product validation at the level of medical professionals as well as the patients chira so there were three phases to this the first phase was uh, through literature uh, which is secondary uh, market research we went through probably hundreds of clinical studies uh, and probably that kind of helps you make a basic assumption because this technology is probably new to the segment we are addressing but in the world robotic rehabilitation exists for 20 years so we could back our work based on those secondary research documents so there is research on how robotic and virtual reality or games are helping physiotherapy patients and we kind of use that as a reference to draw the first step the second is to understand uh, whether this is relevant to the technology that we are developing so we have always been in touch with a wide number of physiotherapists so we always try and take this uh, approvals or feedback right from the early decision making of the product from our esteemed panel of advisors uh and they have been very upfront in you know giving us those feedback early on in the design phase which ensures that the technology that we are building is similar to the secondary research that we have done and is also consistent with the indian ecosystem and it will be helpful in this in terms of promotion and both technological and clinical perspective and the third aspect is actual validation once we had the necessary quality standards approved we have predominantly tested this device with more than 200 patients before we actually went out and started selling so staying within the legal framework we kind of validated it with proper consent from the therapist and they kind of uh, helped us do that and in this one thing did was we our team compulsorily spent probably more than a month in a physiotherapy center with the machine and the patients and the therapists so we also got first hand experience uh on how the machine was being used where the problems were how the features needed to be improved etc so yeah this was not a very simple problem to solve 
and we are continuously trying to you know improve the validation that we have and the market acceptability that can be derived based on that validation yeah yes chirag it's impressive to see the measures you have taken to ensure that your products meet the needs and expectation of medical professionals and patients every innovator need to concentrate more on their product validation uh, chirag how and when was the product accepted commercially and how did the demand unfold probably 3 years back just before covid in december we went to a physiotherapy conference with our prototype and there we met a first customer uh, dr gajanan balerao who is also our very close advisor from pune so he told us that he would incorporate our technology into his clinical practice and we were all i and my team okay we found our first customer we started the company incorporation process and as soon as march 2020 came covid unfolded and everything went under the lockdown so demand could not be scaled very significantly but as soon as things got better we did deploy one machine into their clinic but we changed our approach we said now we don't want to sell so you just test it and let's get feedback so it took us a while probably one year of improvements and in june 2021 we made our first official sale uh, to a clinic in mumbai post that we have been getting a lot of customer referrals and probably one year while improving on the product we de- deployed and onboarded around one customer a month so and luckily this was all through customer referrals we did not have a sales and marketing team and after the successful deployments after then the new regulatory procedures came into picture and we had to get the necessary certifications last year again we started selling and we've been doing uh, probably one or two units a month again so this is more focused and now we are expecting three installations in the next month we are seeing uh, you know things pick up so uh, yeah now the demand will unfold a bit better is what we are looking at yeah good to know that you have at least three installation per month thank you for sharing the journey of your product from the development to commercial acceptance It's really it's exciting to see the demand for your technology increasing and the positive impact it's having on patients chirag uh, marketing is a critical component of any successful business strategy without effective marketing it can be difficult to reach the potential customers how are you marketing your products now is it based more than is it based more on the referrals or typical sales and marketing avenues work for you like you mentioned marketing is very critical but we have to understand the domain and accordingly adjust the marketing plan so i don't think so a very typical sales and marketing plan will work for either imo or for any other company they have to customize it to their needs but our marketing and pr efforts are focused more on awareness because this is a new concept new technology so we try and be present in all the scientific events that are predominantly focused for physiotherapy uh, indian association of physiotherapists society of indian physiotherapists have been closely associated with our journey we have tried to be there at their events right from our early incorporation days idea stage to our current focus right now and currently we have some awareness in this industry people know about robotic and rhino so going forward what we have done is to expand the reach we definitely need more people and expertise on the ground so we have we are trying to partner with people who are experienced in this domain so we can focus on the technology and we have good people who can help us do the sales and marketing yeah great so uh, it is important you need to invest time and resources into marketing efforts in order to achieve a long term success and growth so uh, it's great to know that you have participated in many conferences and you have uh, reached out to your target audience through that uh, today how are you positioned as a compared uh, to your competitors so the single word i would say in india our positioning is value for money whenever a physiotherapist is buying our product probably we are one of the most expensive products in this center so 
our focus is to ensure that our quality and product utility is on par to their expectations they should not feel that it is a uh, splurging spend that they have done but it is an utility spend and which is helping the patients and their business which is a physiotherapy center so what our positioning right now is based on value for money but if you look at competitors mostly all the competition right now is imported in the robotic segment and all of that due to the extra customs etc and also their r&d processes has given us a very com- big competitive advantage in terms of the pricing and the space requirements our device is probably 10 times more affordable and accessible because of both the space requirements the clinical training etc but one thing that we have identified which is the biggest advantage for an indian company and for imo is that a customer support is indispensable being an indian company we are able to resolve customer problems in matter of days if not hours and whether it is an imported product generally this timeline could go into months if not weeks so this ensures that a patient benefit is continuously happening a therapist is not facing much discomfort and you know we are able to maintain a clear positioning of extremely great customer support and super best in class value for money for our products so it's good to know that customer satisfaction and the customer support is the key uh, value and you are uh, in the in such a way you are just positioning your uh, startup with other competitors great so what kind of growth have you seen so far and what are your targets for the future so we have seen tremendous growth in terms of number of deployments in probably the first two years of our journey we had only around 10 installations in the last 6 months we have made more than 10 installations so our concentration of number of installations is growing significantly uh, like i mentioned in this year we are looking at more than 50 installations in india new installations is what i am talking about uh, with the help of our channel partners with the help of uh, the positive word of mouth that we are getting from our customers and in the long term so let's say 5 years down the line uh, rhino signal focus uh is to be a global company so and how do we do that so here i would like to quote a dialogue from three idiots ki aap excellence ke piche bhago success apni aap aayegi so what rhino is focusing on improving our product quality and adherence to international standards once we are ready uh, in terms of regulatory and quality for us europe we are sure that we will not only see 10000s of installation probably we can even surpass that value we can probably not only affect thousands of patients but help millions of patients and not only help hundreds of therapists but help millions of therapists also so that is how we look at growth uh we definitely want to grow our business our startup 100x but we want to do it in a very structured manner we are kind of looking very positively on growth and with the right support from the ecosystem i think so we'll be able to do that great listening to your future plans it's clear that you have a clear vision for success we wish you the best of luck in achieving your targets and continuing to grow your business Uh, Chirag, you have established a successful business using your expertise in the space of robotics and VR. What guidance would you like to offer to the budding entrepreneur who wish to make a mark in the space? Uh, we have probably touched a surface. Probably again, I think so. We are like this industry is like an iceberg. Uh, the more you go into it, the bigger it is. but according to me based on my learning so far i think so early uh, entrepreneurs or young entrepreneurs should focus on the first thing and most important thing that is identification of a problem and 
jhar they should always look at three critical factors the first is their intent to solve that problem probably if it is only money because of which you want to solve a particular problem i think so you should take a step back and reflect because the journey is going to be hard and it might not be always uh, give you enough motivation to cross through those hurdles the second is try and look at the impact that your prop uh, solution can create or how big the problem is if it is a problem which is concentrated to a very few people probably it is good idea to solve it as a research problem and help us uh, scale it using a technology transfer but if it's only a big enough problem you should try and get into a business because then you will have to you know uh, figure out a way to sustain yourself for the next 5 10 probably 50 years down the line so look at the opportunity how big the problem is and how big how grow uh, how fast the problem is growing and last but not the least make sure that you value team above everything else if you look at it from an individual point standpoint things will become very difficult but if you have a good founding team probably any problem that comes thrown your way will be able to go through it so yeah that probably is what we have understood the most important thing is problem rest all you can figure out on your way if you have the right problem and a good team you can probably solve any problem in this world great chirag as you rightly said identification of the uh, problem and hunger to solve the problem with a good team is very much important thank you for sharing your valuable uh, insights and advice i am sure our audience will find it very helpful i appreciate you sparing the time to share the experiences and advice with us today we wish you all the best in your future endeavors both in your business and personal life thank you thank you so much for this insightful uh, session uh, it has been a pleasure sharing our experience to younger audience or older audience people who want to venture into this industry or entrepreneurship i hope that people learn from our experience and can you know solve even bigger problems which will in the end impact probably ourselves and the entire humanity so thank you so much again for inviting us and covering our story uh all the best to all the audience members who are trying to start a business thank you thank you chira thank you so that's all for today we will meet some more motivating entrepreneurs in the upcoming episodes till then stay tuned for more such inspiring stories goodbye